Well, hello and welcome to the third episode of the Comic Book Showcase. I'm Jamie Hari, the founder of the Marvel and DC Databases. And today we're going to talk about a couple of interesting topics. The first being Captain America 2 Winter Soldier. Uh, we recently, everyone here has recently seen the movie and we're going to, spoiler alert, we're going to discuss some of the things that happen in the episode and uh, some of the characters and Easter eggs that appear. So uh, let's jump right in. Um, so why don't we introduce everybody, uh, Billy from the DC Database. And we have Rab from the DC Database. And Mike, everyone seems to be just waving today. No one's actually going to say any uh, words. This is a, a video-only yeah. podcast. Jimmy, you're really putting us on the spot right here. It just feels like, mm, you know, we're, we're just going to let you carry this one. <laughs> take care of everything today. Sure, why not? I'll just take... I'll just start talking. Absolutely, why not? Yeah. And, and Elena, I'll jump over to you, and why don't you tell us what you thought of the movie? Oh, I loved it! I was so excited. Um, I liked all of the... I liked all of it. Uh, I really felt like, for once, it was a comic book to film adaptation, uh, where they're taking a particular story, and mm -hmm. although there were things that were changed, it was really true to the comic book story. Uh, unlike... I'm going to say some of the X-Men movies. Um, the It was a seamless transition. That's That Winter Soldier character that I was watching in the in the movie is the same character that I was reading about in the Brubaker written comic books. So to be, so to be clear, the, the story that they're pulling from is Nick Fury versus uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was uh, 1988, I think summer and fall of 1988. Um, Mike, did you read that uh, story? And if so, how do you think it compared? I did not read that story, but um, you know what? They did a really good job with that movie. They fit in a lot of items in a short period of time. It didn't feel like it was overly cluttered, but they dealt with a whole bunch of like really awesome topics, like going through from Winter Soldier to um, the uh, Black Widow's... like. Her past, they touched on that a bit. They touched on Nick Fury's past. Um, they, they touched on like almost everybody's past. But the one thing that I thought was missing was a kind of a where are some of these other characters that are in this universe? And I know that they're planning on going to touch on that in the uh, Avengers movie, but uh, it just, um, yeah, overall, really good movie. I think um, Captain America Winter Soldier was, I think it was the best uh, Marvel standalone, Marvel solo movie that we've had so far, including Iron Man, including all of that. And I think what made it the strongest was that I, this was the first movie we've seen that really felt like a story in a shared universe and not just like a standalone thing for this one guy, uh, where that's kind of something that all uh, superhero movies do. Where, like, oh, like, and this is the one where Batman fights the Penguin, and the Penguin is around for the length of one story, and then he dies horribly. But this is, this is the Penguin story where nobody else is allowed to show up. And Winter Soldier, it really felt like they were existing in this larger universe with all sorts of things going on that we weren't seeing the full uh, breadth of. It, it made me feel like I was watching a piece of a much larger world, and that's a very difficult thing to do. So, so to speak about that, there was, uh, you know, an introduction of uh, uh, Georges St. Pierre, the, the UFC fighter who played Batroc, um, uh, from Batroc's Big Brigade, which is a, a lovely, um, uh, you know, as Elena put it earlier, a C-list, a C-list uh, group of characters who are mostly just annoying to, uh, to to Captain America. But um, so, how did everyone feel about some of these, you know, just like name drops and sort of appearances of uh, we'll call them C and D list characters? It makes me so angry that we got a movie with Batroc the Leaper before we got Wonder Woman. I'm furious about that. It's a DC fan. But they did really good. Like they brought in a bunch of like. Uh, side characters to this storyline that only had like maybe like 10 minutes worth of screen time and they like really played them well um, especially my favorite one was when they uh, brought on um, his name is eluding me at this point in time um, sounds like does the oh. stomach was it one of the shield guys no the bad guy with the 
Uh, Arnim Zola. Arnim Zola. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was like one of the best ways to bring that character into that universe that they could have possibly have done. Because it shows like the reality of the situation, like what they could have actually done at the time that they needed to move him into some kind of technology, and he was there. And all these like 1970s tapes and servers and you know press play on disc, and it was awesome. I love how qu- I love how immediately <laughs> they, they they scrap him so quickly. I love that he's been, he's been surviving for decades and decades yeah. underground, and then he survives maybe like three minutes into meeting Captain America. And but that's the thing is like because he's digital, can he be like moved into a new character, like into a new situation somewhere else? Like is he well, grab the flash somewhere? Drive. They grabbed the flash drive when they left. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, he's uh you know on three hundred thousand pounds worth of nineteen fifties computers or a eight ounce flash drive. <laughs> 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 Whatever. <laughs> I was really excited about Agent 13, speaking of the small characters in there, because she was, uh, she was there, she was playing that undercover role that the, that the character does, and then when, uh, when things got real, when she had to bust into Roger's apartment, she had the gun out, she was calm, cool, collected, uh, and took control of the situation when Cap was still looking around, going like, what just happened, what just happened? I think as a DC fan, I feel the uh, all the name dropping. It bore. It sort of toes the line between uh, this is really cool, and I'm interested in finding out more about these characters versus who the hell are these people and what are they doing here and why did they <laughs> give them this screen time? But uh, I thought Agent Thirteen was really cool. Uh, I don't know that. I thought also about Artem Zola. I didn't think it was that bad that he got destroyed so quickly because the point is that Hydra lives. That's what you're supposed to get from that scene, and that's what you do get. And then I don't know if Hydra dies at the end, but <laughs> because they they cut off some heads. Well, some yeah, no, they, they they cut off the head, so I think they should be fine. I uh, think won't back except for the off the head. Except for the Strucker part at the end, you know, Strucker yeah, the other leader of Hydra. They cut off the head. What more? If that means any organization that you cut off the head, that's the thing about heads. That means the organization's done for. Well, you I'm cut off one and two will grow in its place. Wait, what? <laughs> Hail Hydra! Hail Hydra! Oh you my God! The worst. They're in the chat. They're in the chat. <laughs> Um, one of the interesting characters that they had in that movie, which they really didn't name drop on, but he was there the whole time, was uh, Crossbones. And I really enjoyed seeing like that played out, because uh, apparently this is going to come into the uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, TV series as well. And he'll be a character, a pivotal character on that show. I didn't realize that. Yeah, so the one the one character who uh, you see at the end, he's all burnt up and stuff, and like he was in the elevator fight scene with Cap, he was in the yeah. very beginning scene, um, kind of you know rough looking but not so rough looking, attractive looking male. Um, yeah, he's Crossbones. Well, it's, I even I, even all the just like the minor celebrity cameos and the character actors that they used in the movies were all such a great choice. Uh, I loved like the little cameos by uh, like Danny Putty from Community as yeah. <laughs> as a shield yeah. technician. That was fantastic. Yeah, that was really uh, random. Also, doing very well for himself. Uh, Lau, the bad guy from The Dark Knight, is now on the UN Security Council. So great for him. Something t- something tells me Danny Putty was probably asking to be in the movie rather than the other way around. I mean, he's cool oh, and popular, sure. but I'm sure he's a huge fan and just wanted to be in it. DC Pearson also from Derek Comedy. That was a fantastic cameo. He's the guy in the Apple Store. You guys ever watch? No. Der- no. Derek Comedy. It's Donald Glover's sketch comedy troupe, and they're fantastic. And don't forget about Stan the Man. Stan yeah. the Man. Yeah. That was a pretty good scene. Everybody laughed at that in the theater. So, so obviously we started talking a little bit about um, Agent 13 and, and obviously they played up uh, a good portion of the conversation between uh, Captain America and uh, 
um, Black Widow was about getting him a date. And, uh, and uh, they obviously built up Agent 13 as a, a potential love interest for future, um, uh, for future storylines and future movies. So how do we feel about uh, that pairing? Is that, the, is that a one true pairing? It really concerns me if they're going to start bringing romance into these movies because I feel that the one thing that a lot of the really good Marvel movies had going for them was the fact that there was no love interest in these movies. It was always just a storyline, and they stuck away from having that love interest in there. I mean, they touched on it in some of them, but it just, like, it was pretty much a side story, like side, side story even, if you were, like, it wasn't a main part of it, and I think that made the success of some of these movies, especially the Avengers movie, because there was nothing about love in there at all. There was no love interest, no love triangle, nothing. That's what I, yeah, that's what I loved so much about seeing uh, Black Widow's character, is that she had a very, very strong relationship with Captain America throughout the entire movie. And there's, there's, I hate that unfortunate trend where, like, any time there's a lead male and female... It has to be like about fucking and 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 they were like just very close friends and that was a much more interesting relationship to see unfold and develop. I it, agree. I agree completely. But the thing, the difference between Agent Thirteen and Captain America and say Pepper Potts and Iron Man is that Agent Thirteen is not usually in. Uh, a, a role where she's the maiden that has to be rescued. She yeah. is v much closer to his equal than most of the other uh, relationships. So they can go off on adventures together and go fight and go take on Hydra and terrorists and whatnot. And they can do it as closer to equals than most of the other, uh, you know, superhero and their civilian significant other. So on the on the topic of sort of people or characters of equal power or of equal importance in a storyline, um, just going back to the, the concept of uh, a one true pairing, uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, Justice League number 12. Any thoughts? It's kind of ridiculous that they're, well, it's not ridiculous, but they've, so I feel that they've been sort of mushed together after years of it being a Superman Lois relationship, and yeah, it's like, yes. it's like it's like who was writing it? Jeff Johns is has got his two action figures of Superman and Wonder Woman, and he's like, "Ooh, mew, mew, mew! You guys are kissing now." And, and it's not. It doesn't feel as genuine as it maybe should, even though, or it certainly didn't until they started releasing uh, Superman Wonder Woman despite the fact that the book is called Superman Wonder Woman and not Wonder Woman Superman, to my great displeasure. But uh, Charles Soule, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, I think it's Soule, uh, is writing that, and it's very... Uh, it's fleshing out their relationship, but I still feel in my heart that Superman belongs with Lois, and I think a lot of other people do. Can I? I am just so happy though that they are trying new things because I do like I I love the Superman Lois Lane relationship, but the biggest problem with and I even love that they got married in the '90s. I think that was a great move for DC, but I feel like it killed a lot of story potential for Superman. Where for the past uh, pretty much since Superman and Lois Lane got married, we have seen just like that entire side of who Superman is, the side of like falling in love and developing a connection with another person. There's no there's we never hear it read any stories about that because it's always just, oh no no no. Yeah, he's with Lois Lane. That's just that's established because that's the way things have to be. Uh and we never we we never get to we never really get that like explored or exactly why. It's just the status quo. I completely agree. I mean, the same thing happened on the Spider-Man side when him and Mary Jane hooked up and end up getting married, and the, the story essentially, much like the relationship, kind of got stale. There was nothing to build on anymore. There's no interest. Um, it just kind of died storyline-wise, and, you know, then they had her and him separate, and it was this big, huge, like, story arc where... Mephisto came and, you know, he wanted their relationship. Does, 
like, and that's what like the the breaking point was in order to save um, his aunt's life. And one more day. Yeah, it was like that. That was interesting the way they broke it up, but then you know, it they essentially rebooted it right there because there was no relationship. They just took it like right back to the beginning, and they never had a relationship. And I don't like that they did that, but I think if they knew that they couldn't be together, they were like conscious of the situation. That would have been a little bit better, but it allowed them to actually yeah. start exploring new things. And they actually started to have, like, Peter had a relationship on the side, and she, Mary Jane ended up coming back into the picture, so it was kind of like there was a little bit of a thing going on there. But I think that when they marry a character to their one true pair, it, it does something to the storyline that just doesn't work. I completely disagree. I think that the One More Day is the worst Spider-Man story I've ever read. Um, it was... It, pathetic, I guess I'm going to say, because I, I can understand what you're saying about, okay, well, cutting off story ideas, but, I mean, Spider-Man and Mary Jane had separated before that, and there was still, them having relationship issues was still uh, an interesting story in the Spider-Man book, and uh, and just, just rebooting everyone, so that instead of Spider-Man being... Uh, Peter Parker being a whole character who has this this personal life, he was rebooted, as you say, into being a loser living in a basement without a job instead of having all those things he'd established over 40 years of continuity. And as for the uh, Wonder Woman-Superman relationship, well, I mean, this is not the first time we've seen this, right? Um, I thought it was yeah, really interesting to keep them uh, that being said, watching the uh, Justice League uh, Unlimited cartoon, I kind of liked Wonder Woman and Batman a little more. Yeah. Batman and like Wonder Woman, that's my OTP. It is? Really? Yeah, I think Batman and Wonder Woman makes the most sense out of anybody uh, Batman has ever dated. I think yeah, it I makes a very good Batman relationship. Alina. I kind I kind of hate the Batman-Catwoman relationship. Uh, and I understand why everybody loves it from like a like a femme fatale perspective, and I do. I love those like little vignettes of him chasing her across the city, but it's it's been done so much, and I'm so bored of it. Like all they have is that little like oh like, and you're chasing me because I'm the bad guy. But am I the bad guy, or am I, or do I have boobs? Which one is it? <laughs> it's both. What? Um, and so and. Uh, like, whenever they actually do get together, and Hush was an exception. Hush, they wrote their relationship very well for that little short period, but I, just, I feel like they're not sustainable. Like, ultimately, there really isn't that much there other than they're both like, like we're both dark, tortured souls, and that, and that means sex, right? It, yeah? I think what's important is not so much that, like, you say that you get tired of Batman and Catwoman together, but I think... We get tired of that because they never let them get much further than the chasing and yeah. the sex. So you think like, it gets tiring in the same way that it gets tiring to see Superman try to hide his identity from Lois Lane. It's tiring because sense. they just keep doing it over and over and over, and they did it to death in the Silver Age or the Golden Age. And um, but I guess I'm always... Uh, did you want to... I had I other things always... to say. But... <laughs> I'll let you finish. Um, but I think, say, uh, in the, I think it was the mid to late 2000s when uh, Catwoman ended up with a baby and they sort of, it's always that it gets cut off by them saying, like, I can't, I can't be with anybody. I'm Batman. Batman can't be in love. <laughs> and then you're like, Gah! Yes, you can, idiot. Stop but saying you, The only reason you can't be in love is because you keep saying that. Exactly. And it you just it frustrates. Attitude, Batman. Because there is a pleasure in seeing your your uh, your guy get with his lady. Yeah. Like, forever and ever, happily ever after. Even if there is sort of a death of story, um, I, I, I disagree with you saying that the marriage killed Superman because... Or, the marriage killed Superman's fun because I think a lot of the best stories, mostly written by Greg Rucka, <laughs> were, That's fair. were uh, 
at, during the marriage. But um, yeah. so, so one of the things that I have always enjoyed about Superman, the the, the larger mythos was actually uh, the adventures of Lois and Clark, and I think that took a really unique twist, a la Smallville, which was um, Kal El is the character, uh, you know. Clark Kent is the character, not Superman, and S Superman is his alter ego. And it was really interesting the way that um, Adventures of Lois and Clark explored the relationship because they got married pretty much, well, they didn't get married till much later, but they, they the, the reveal happened and they started officially being engaged somewhere around the beginning of season three out of four seasons. And it was interesting to see how the first two seasons were she didn't know and there was, uh, you know, the, the interesting plot lines where he had to dance around her you know, ignorance to the fact that he was Superman. Then, then for the second, for the third and fourth season, she knew, and he was always like, ah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I gotta go, I gotta go, you know, I gotta. And she was like, yeah, fine, go. And then, you know, the interesting. Uh, way I have to go worship she... Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. He, yeah, exactly. So, so actually, um, just looking at the time, we are actually running out of time. So, uh, I'll leave it to you guys. One final thought, and then uh, we'll wrap it up for the episode. I hate. This uh, I always feel kind of torn because there's this idea that characters getting together ruins the story, and that's not true. I think it just makes it more difficult to find good stories where it's so easy to write those tiny, crappy little, like, oh, but Superman has to, like, but they'll find out if I take my glasses off. And, uh, and like, Catwoman stealing stuff, but, like, did I steal it or am I going to have sex with you? Can it be both? And those are they're easy to write. And I still, I feel like there's so much more there. Uh, it, when you get to the point where the characters are in a serious relationship, where Batman has a girlfriend, or where Superman is married to Lois Lane, and the fact that it's harder to tell good stories uh, in that environment doesn't mean that it's not worthwhile. I would love for the future of comic books to include actually getting some good, like, Superman and Lois Lane, husband and wife comics, really seeing what Lois Lane is up to now instead of just her being, like, the lady Superman comes home to at the end of the day. I would love to see a really serious comic arc about Batman dealing with a long-term relationship. Why have we never gotten to see that? That's horrible. Well, so my little last snippet I'm going to give for the day is I say let's bring back some pink kryptonite and see how that plays out for a couple months. Awesome! I would love that. For those of you who don't know, uh, in the peanut gallery, pink kryptonite is the kryptonite that makes Superman temporarily gay. <laughs> that was a Peter David creation. Yeah. Just picture it now. Superman and Jimmy Olsen. I would, I would read the shit out of a comic book like that. I would read, if they made a new, a new volume of Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, but put it in quotation marks, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen... I would and buy every one issue one five one. times. <laughs> My right, final well. thought. I want to do a final thought. <laughs> Tell you. Just to tie it together. My final thought, thought, the rap's final thought sucks. They were, they were doing a bit of hinting, I thought, in Captain America that perhaps there is some unrequited love type feelings between uh, Black Widow and the Captain. And I know it, it sort of makes you feel like, yes, they are friends, but are they maybe more? And I think that's both good and bad, but I appreciated the whole relationship as a whole. So one last one last thing across each of you. Out of ten, how did you rate the movie? Billy? Ten out of ten. Rob? Eight. Mike? Definitely a ten out of ten. Alana? Ten out of ten. <laughs> I, I'm... <laughs> I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it about a nine. I think it was a fantastic movie and absolutely worth seeing. Um, now that we've spoiled the living crap out of it. So uh, anyway, thank you uh, very much to everyone who joined us this week. Uh, looking forward to talking to you guys again next week. Um, join us in the chat live uh, if you have anything uh, to say. Otherwise, check us out in the Marvel database. We have uh, Facebook feeds and Twitter feeds to follow. Thanks for joining. And the DC database. And the DC database as well. Absolutely. Which is not as big, but has more heart. More heart. More heart. Thanks and have a great week. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again.